Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Well, the great Gildersleeve is facing the new year with a big problem on his mind. Adeline. Adeline. Yes, that's his problem. Adeline Fairchild, his charming bride-to-be. One of the reasons the great man and Adeline decided to get married was so they could adopt the little baby girl the Gildersleeve family's been taking care of lately. Well, the baby is back with her father now, but Adeline is still very much there. So, to marry or not to marry, that is the question. Yes. It's enough to make a man pace the floor. Adeline's a wonderful woman. She'd make a fine wife. But do I really want to get married? I don't know. Anyhow, it wouldn't be fair to back out of it right now, just because the baby's gone. It'd be nice to be married, I think. But I've been a bachelor too long to change now. You all right, Miss Gilsey? What? Oh, sure, I'm all right. Oh, thought I heard you walking up and down in here. Walking up and down? Well, I hope dinner didn't disagree with you. No, I feel fine. Yes, sir. But you look kind of worried. Sure there's nothing bothering you? Bothering me? Of course not. Well, you sure look worried. Something wrong with the water department? Bertie, there is nothing wrong. Yes, sir. But you sure look worried. <laughs> Must be something bothering you. Believe me, Bertie, there is nothing bothering me. In fact, I'm all right. I'm happy. Yes. Sir. I'm very happy. Yes. Sir. I'm just about the happiest man in the whole world. Yes. Sir. For the happiest man in the world, you sure look worried. <laughs> I sure feel worried, too. <laughs> uh, I'll have to make up my mind pretty soon. Adeline must think it's funny I haven't mentioned the marriage all week. She hasn't said anything either. Guess she's waiting for me. Hi, Aunt. Oh, uh, hello, Leroy. What are you doing? What? What are you walking around the room for? I'm in training, Leroy. I'm going out for the low hurdles in the Olympic Games. What? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you about something? Not right now, Leroy. It's awful important. Not right now, I told you. I've got a problem. You've got a problem. Huh? Nothing, my boy. What's your trouble? Well, Elmer's lonesome. Elmer? My turtle. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he hasn't been eating lately. I think he's lonesome up in my room all day by himself. What do you want me to do? Go up there and sit with him? <laughs> well, I thought I might buy another turtle to keep him company. Well, we'll see. I saw a swell turtle downtown for only 75 cents. Leroy, we'll talk about it some other time. But, uh... The subject is closed. I've got other things on my mind right now. But what about Elmer? Elmer will just have to work this thing out for himself. But, uh... Leroy... Okay. A turtle. A lonesome turtle. Elmer doesn't know when he's well off. <laughs> better stop this. I'm wearing out the rug. Okay. 
What? Have you seen my movie magazine? I left it down here somewhere. No, I haven't, Marjorie. I don't read movie magazines. Oh, maybe it's under the sofa pillows. It had Gary Cooper on the cover. That's very interesting. He was wearing a checkered shirt. Good for him. Are you sure you haven't seen it, Uncle? No, I haven't. And Marjorie, will you please stop tearing up the room? My, but you're jumpy tonight. Well? Don't you feel well? I feel fine. Well, there's something on your mind. Is it Miss Fairchild? What? Adeline? Of course not. What made you think that? Well, something's the matter. She still wants to marry you, doesn't she? Huh? Why shouldn't she? Well, I just thought now that you two can't adopt the baby, she might have changed her mind. You think so? Say, that would be awful, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, I know you have a fatal fascination, but it's just possible Miss Fairchild might be able to resist your charms. Well, it's possible, all right. Of course. You know, Marjorie, you may be right. Adeline hasn't said anything about our marriage all week. By George, maybe she has changed her mind. <laughs> Why, Auntie, you sound happy about it. Happy? Who's happy? Yeah. See you later, my dear. Where are you going, Uncle Over to Mo? see Adeline. Want to make sure she's changed her mind. I mean, she hasn't changed her mind. <laughs> Where's my coat? Oh! Didn't see the coffee table. <laughs> and look what's under it. Your movie magazine, Gary Cooper. He looks wonderful in that checkered shirt. Hiya, Gary. <laughs> Goodbye. Sometimes I wonder about Unky. Funny. Never occurred to me that Adeline might not want to get married me. Maybe I've just been worrying about nothing. Sure, it'll be better this way. I'll just let her break it off and then... Oh, hello, Adeline. Doc Morton. Thank you. Didn't expect to see you tonight. Well, I just thought I'd come over and surprise you. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Sit down. Thank you. Uh, uh, uh. How've you been, Adeline? Just fine, sir. Uh, how've you been? Fine. Yeah, just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here it is, Adeline, almost New Year's. Yeah, yeah. You know what they say about New Year's? It gives you a chance to start over. Correct last year's mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, off with the old, on with the new, that's what they say. Throckmorton, what's the matter with you tonight? Me? Why, nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> Adeline. Yeah, yeah. Adeline. We haven't talked much about our marriage lately. No, we haven't. I'm glad you brought it up, Throckmorton. There's something I wanted to tell you about that. There is? I've been thinking things over, Throckmorton, and I... Yes? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Go on, Adeline. What were you going to tell me? Well, maybe you wouldn't like to hear it. Oh, yes, I would. Well... That's all right, Adeline. If you're thinking of changing our plans, I'll understand... Of course, I'll be heartbroken. But, Throckmorton... Believe me, I wouldn't blame you for anything you do. After all, I'm no prize. I'm just a middle-aged water commissioner. I'm fat. Well, stylishly stout. Oh, now, Throckmorton... It's really up to you. Don't try to spare my feelings. It won't be easy ending my days as a lonely old bachelor. But I'll be brave. Now, what was it you wanted to tell me? Why, oh, darling, I just wanted to tell you... That I think we should get married right away. Huh? <laughs> Is that what you wanted to tell me? Yes, you sweet old thing. I'll marry you, even if you are middle-aged and fat. <laughs> <laughs> so you just go right on down and see the minister tomorrow so we can set the date. The minister? Yes, and don't you worry, Throckmorton. You'll never be a lonely old bachelor. No, I guess I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Judge. Yes, I came over to challenge you to a game of checkers, but it seems you were over calling on your light of love. Yes, yes. So I decided to stay and play Parcheesi with the children. You didn't stay over at Miss Fairchild's very long, Auntie. Well, I thought I'd come home early and 
Get some sleep. What's the matter, Gelde? Don't you get enough sleep down at the water department? <laughs> <laughs> very funny, you old goat. Now, Gilday, we all know you're a very fine water commissioner. Everything work all out all right, Uncle Mort? What? You know, with Miss Fairchild. What happened? Well... What's this all about? Well, you might as well know it now. Adeline and I are going to be married right away. Well, that's wonderful news. Gee, no kidding. Oh, Uncle Mort, so you talked Miss Fairchild into it. I sure did. <laughs> When's the happy day? When's the happy day going to be, Gilda? Happy day? Oh, the wedding. Yeah, well, pretty soon, I guess. I'm going to see Reverend Prescott tomorrow. Oh, I can't wait for the wedding. I'll be a bridesmaid. And I'll be a flower girl. <laughs> The bells are ringing for you and your gang. All right, Judge. Mr. Gillespie, what's going on in here? Bertie, Auntie, and Miss Fairchild are going to get married right away. Isn't that wonderful? Congratulations, Mr. Gillespie. Uh, thank you, Bertie. Well, you won't look right no more now, Mr. Gillespie. You'll be happy. Yes, of course. Yes, sir, you'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Gildy, old friend, this is one of life's golden moments. So I'll let you savor it with your little family. I'll just say congratulations, old friend, and did you. Thank you, Horace. Good night. Good night, Jack. Good night. Good night, all. The bells are oh. ringing. Uh. Oh, Uncle Mort, I'm so glad it turned out this way. Congratulations. Thank you, my dear. Yeah, I guess you're pretty happy, Unc. Oh, yes. Yes, I am. I'm very happy. I've never been so happy in my life. <laughs> Boy, what a character. Mr. Ward, you know what I think? What's that, Bertie? I think we ought to have a slogan for parquet. Because everybody's going to like parquet and margarine once they try it. But they've got to remember to try it. Well, a slogan like parquet... Like parquet tastes so good, tastes like it should cost twice as much. Well, whether or not that's a slogan, Bertie, it certainly is true. And parquet tastes so good because it's made from the carefully selected products of American farms. It's actually prepared by Kraft with all the care of a rare luxury food. The nice part is... Though every pound of parquet gives you all the nutritional value of the most expensive spreads, plus 15,000 units of essential vitamin A, parquet costs only about half as much. That's right, Mr. Wall. And as good as that cost is, the taste is even better. Mm, wonderful on hot rolls. Or muffins, Mr. Wall, or waffles, or pancakes. And wonderful for cooking, too. It's just good eating no matter what way you use it. Tastes like it should cost twice as much. So, friends, why not serve parquet on your table this week? Ask for some tomorrow. That's parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. back to our happy bridegroom. The great Gildersleeve seems to be spending a very sleepless night. <sighs> Wish I could get some sleep. Every time I close my eyes, I hear that music. <sighs> Ooh, there it goes again. Why doesn't it stop? Maybe if I turn over, it'll go away. Uh, it's gone. Uh, well, maybe I can get some sleep. Sure. Uh, uh, I just close my eyes. To you, Adeline Fairchild, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband. I do. Uh. <laughs> and to you, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, Take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? No, I don't. You don't? No, I don't. I don't. <sighs> what a 
tonight. I don't want to get married. I like being a bachelor. How am I going to tell poor Adeline? Well, I'll just have to do it. I'll tell her the first thing in the morning. Courage, Gildersleeve. You're not afraid. Courage. <laughs> Gildersleeve, you said you were going to tell her this morning. Just knock on her door and get it over with. All right, by George, I will. <clears throat> Why, good morning, Throckmorton. Good morning, Adeline. Uh, here's your morning paper. Goodbye. <laughs> What's this? Uh, I suppose the judge told you. And how is the happy bridegroom this morning? Oh, well, I'm all right, I guess. Phoebe, I just came in for a cigar, and I'm in a hurry. Oh, yes, I suppose you can't wait till you see the minister. Mm -hmm. That's what you think. How's that? Uh, nothing, Phoebe. You just give me the cigar. Oh, of course. There you are. Thanks. And, Mr. Gildersleeve, you can light it when you get home. You and Miss Fairchild make such a good match. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven's sake, Peavy. That was a little witticism, Mr. Gildersleeve. I know, Peavy. You make a good match. Don't you get it? Yes. Peavy, that joke is older than you are. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, I'll see you later. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Gildersleeve. I, I have something to tell you. What's that? Well, it's my pleasant duty to invite you to the Jolly Boys tonight. Tonight? Yes, we're having a little celebration in honor of your coming wedding. Oh, you are? Yes, sir, we're going to give you a real send-off. But, Peavy, I don't want you to do that. Oh, we're glad to do it. Yes, I know, it's but... It's the least we can do for a fellow Jolly Boy. It'll be a night you'll never forget, Mr. Gildersleeve. Peavy, you don't understand. There'll be speeches, singing, all the cokes you can drink. Peavy, I don't want a party. Now, you just go see the minister and leave the party to us. What? There'll be a hot time in the old town tonight. Oh, what's the use? shop. The jolly boys are all waiting for me, I guess. Just have to tell them I'm not going to see the minister. I'm not going to get married. I'll tell Adeline tomorrow. Positively. Listen to them. They're a swell bunch of fellows. They went to all this trouble, too, just for me. Well, I've got to tell them. There he is. Well, if it isn't the guest of honor. Hello. How are you, Commissioner? I'm all right. Hello, Commissioner. Hello, Chief. So you're about to take the fatal step. Well... Marriage isn't a step. It's a big jump. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, ho. Yeah, it certainly is. Well, gentlemen, shall we begin the festivities in honor of our bridegroom-to-be? Sure. Judge, there's something I want to say to all of you. Now, now, Gilda, let us make the speeches first. You get your turn later. But, Judge... Gather around the table, everybody, and bring your coat. Now, wait a minute, fellas. I really want to... Now, Gilda, you sit here as guest of honor. Quiet, everybody. All right. <laughs> Fellow jolly boys on this auspicious evening. Judge, I've got to say something. Gildy, I told you you'll get your turn later. Mm -hmm. Now look, the commission wants to talk now. He knows after he gets married, he won't get a chance. <laughs> <laughs> that will do, Floyd. Fellow jolly boys on this auspicious evening, it is only fitting we start with a toast. 
to our dear friend who is leading the ranks of bachelorhood. Mm -hmm. This toast will be rendered by Summerfield's leading pharmacist, Mr. Richard Peavy. Mr. Peavy, thank you. <clears throat> they say when you wed, you can't go wrong. You settle down in a flat. They say married life is just a song. Well, <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Well, we thought you wouldn't mind a little humor, Gildy. We all know you'll be very happy with Miss Fairchild. Mm, of course, Mr. Gildersleeve. I, I was only joshing. Well, enough of frivolity. Now, my friend... Judge, if you'll just let me say something... Quiet, so Gildy. I have the floor. Friends, I have just a few words to say. Good. <laughs> I heard that, Floyd. Go on, Judge. Thank you. Jolly boy, Gildersleeve, I have a confession to make. Mm -hmm. I must admit that there are those of us who doubted that this marriage between you and Miss Fairchild would ever take place. You did? Yeah. You're such a confirmed bachelor, we feared that at the last moment you might evade this marriage. Well, and I... disappoint this fine young southern woman who has put her trust in you. Yeah, we should have known you wouldn't be a skunk, Kamesh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we apologize for misjudging you, Gildy. You've proven yourself a gentleman and a jolly boy. We're proud of you. Hey, hey, hey. Now, oh, fellas, 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 I don't deserve this. Oh, you do, Commish. You're a great guy. All together, man. What are you going to do? For he's a jolly good fellow. Oh, for he's a jolly good fellow. Wait a minute. For he's a jolly good fellow. Hey, Commish, where are you going? See you later, fellas. I have to see a minister about a wedding. <laughs> Hope you don't mind my dropping in this late, Dr. Prescott. Why, not at all. I was just working on my sermon for next Sunday. Oh? Well, don't let me interrupt you, Reverend. Uh, doctor. <laughs> it's quite all right. I was looking for an excuse to stop for a while anyway. What can I do for you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, you see, Adeline, that is, Miss Fairchild and I are planning to get married. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. And uh, we'd like you to officiate at our wedding. Why, I'd be delighted, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, when did you and Miss Fairchild decide to get married? Well, we became engaged several weeks ago. That's when I was taking care of the little baby girl. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we thought we might get married and adopt the baby. I see. I understand the baby is back with her father now. Yeah, that's right. But there's no reason why I shouldn't marry Adeline anyway. I mean, I want to. Very much. Oh. Yes. Adeline will make a good wife, all right. She's understanding, friendly, companionable. Mm hmm. So I'd like to set the date. Get it over with. That is, uh, get it all set. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, may I ask you a question? Uh, yes. Are you quite sure you want to get married? What? Certainly. Of course I am. You're really in love with Miss Fairchild, deeply? Well. You're not just going through with this marriage from a sense of duty? Well, Dr. Prescott, you see... Yes, I think I do see. Mr. Gildersleeve, I believe you're trying to do something that's very honorable and fine. But I'm not sure that you're being fair to either yourself or Miss Fairchild. Oh, but I can't disappoint Adeline. It wouldn't be right. Sometimes it's hard to know just what is right. But I sincerely believe that a marriage based only on duty or an obligation... There'll never be a happy one. You're right, Dr. Prescott, but what am I going to do? I think you owe it to Miss Fairchild to be honest. Don't you? Yes. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? It, oh, good night. And thanks. <laughs> Evening, Adeline. Uh, come in. Thanks. I'm glad you're still up. Well, I was sort of hoping you'd come over tonight. Yeah, well, here I am. Uh, please, sit down. Uh, thanks. 
<sighs> Adeline? Yeah, yeah? There's something I want to tell you. Yeah, yeah? Adeline? Rather warm in here, isn't it? Uh, Throckmorton, when two people are planning to get married, I think they should be very honest with each other, don't you? Oh, yes, I do. If you had something to tell me, I'd want you to say it. Oh, yes, of course. Adeline? And if I have something to tell you, I should say it, too. What? I'm going to be honest with you, Throckmorton. I really don't want to go through with our wedding. Huh? You don't? You're a wonderful person, and I'm very fond of you. But, well, I've been thinking about it a lot this past week, and I realize now I'm not really in love with you. Oh. I guess when we were making all those plans to adopt the baby, I just got carried away. You did? Oh, I know I should have told you before. I, I tried to tell you last night, but I, I felt so sorry for you when you talked about ending your days as a lonely old bachelor. Lonely old bachelor? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I hope you won't be heartbroken over this. Well, this is quite a shock, Adeline. <laughs> I know I gave you my word, and I'll still go through with the marriage if you want me to. Oh, no, I mean, <laughs> it's all right. I'm sure this is better for both of us. It sure is. I mean, you're so right. <laughs> and, Throckmorton, there's no reason why we can't go on being good friends. No, of course not. Uh, Adeline. Yeah, yes? Yeah? Since we're not going to get married and we're just good friends, how about a little kiss? <gasps> Throckmorton! There. It's much nicer this way. <laughs> and happy New Year. <laughs> Do you ever serve your cooked vegetables topped with golden, delicious parquet? There's nothing better on creamy mashed potatoes or hot seven-minute cabbage. And you can use parquet margarine generously because it costs less. Yes, nutritious as it is, reinforced with important vitamin A as it is, parquet costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads. Try this margarine with a light, delicate, luxury taste. Try it in cooking as well as a delicious spread for bread. See for yourself that parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. All of us who bring you this program each week would like to wish you the best of everything during the coming year. Yes, sir? A happy New Year from... Una Merkel, Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, Dick LeGrain, Arthur Q. Bryan, Ken Christie, John Wald, and me, Harold Perry. <laughs> and from, from Gene Stone and Jack Robinson, who wrote tonight's show. Oh? John Elliott and Andy White, our other writers. Oh, yeah. From Jack Meekin and the orchestra. Monty Fraser, our sound effects man. Oh, Monty. Ray Ferguson, our engineer. Fran Van Hardisfeld, our director. Yeah. And from our sponsors, the Kraft Foods Company. We all hope that our shows will bring you a lot of pleasure during the coming year. Good night. Have you had a hankering for that old-fashioned, aged, natural American cheese? If so, you'll be glad to know that now, for the first time since before the war, Kraft has plenty of those mellow golden wheels. Since 1941, the demand for cheese has been so great that it's been difficult to set aside enough for aging. But now, at long last, Kraft has enough to supply your dealer with all he needs. Ask him for a big wedge cut from a golden wheel of mellow, good, aged, natural American. Just be sure that it's the kind that's been carefully aged by the master cheesemakers of Kraft. <laughs> This is NBC, the national...